a lot of the power in Photoshop actually lies in the ability to work non-destructively. So if you're like me, you always have the ability to go back and change content. So nothing's flattened or anything like that. Say for instance in here, if I want to move this diamond, I can move it. It's not on that background. And so that's where working non-destructively is most transparent is with the layers panel, right? We can see that. We can see the number of layers in here. Got a lot going on, but Let's look at some pro tips because I can actually uh, sort through my different layers if you have as many as I do. So I can see all the pixel layers or all of the adjustment layers or all of the text layers, right? Or I can even change it to where, you know what, just show me the selected layers. So nothing is selected. But now if I want to select this text, oh, there it is right there. And there's that diamond. This skull is actually really deep, like multiple, you know, sort of layer groups in, and it just shows me on the main level. So that's kind of a cool way to work when you get, you know, really heavy into layers. So let's just actually show you another power tip, because again, look, I didn't even name these layers, it's kind of a problem. Uh, but check this out. We want to trick out this layers panel. So let's go into panel options, because I can't actually tell what these things are. It's kind of bad. I can't I have no idea. Well, instead of viewing the whole document, have the thumbnail show the layer bounds. So actually show what it is. Hey, imagine that. And I don't like expanding new effects and don't add copy everywhere. So if this is layer one or if it's, if it's uh, you know, diamond, just call it diamond all the way up. So clicking OK. Oh, that's what those are. Those are the curves, those little curly cues right there. And you can see how that works. There's diamond and other shapes and everything. So that's just tricking out uh, your layers panel. Uh, but how did I get to this place in the first place? Now that I kind of covered layers, let's talk about sort of working faster. And again, pro tips, because I'm going to focus on a layout I need to do, which is a poster for South by Southwest. So in Bridge, I can actually select all the layers that I want to bring into one PSD and go to Tools, Photoshop, load everything into Photoshop layers. Just do that, right? It's going to name everything appropriately, which is nice basically by the layer names and if Photoshop can open it it can be a layer loaded up this way and there's even some text layers in here all right so there is everything you can see my graphics and then all the various layer names I didn't have to drag them in it saves a lot of time and I can start to you know move everything into place if I want, you know, as appropriate, like I'm doing right now. Uh, but really, I want to turn off these layers. And I still want to work non-destructively, but this isn't even the right format. It basically made it as wide as the widest image. So I want to crop it down. So using the crop tool, again, this is all about working non-destructively. Make sure this isn't uh, pressed because that's going to delete the pixels once they're cropped and I don't want that to happen I want to be able to crop this down like this size roughly kind of like that nice and tight like that because this is a sort of a, a cover and I can still move say for instance this guy with the bike and bring him into position and everything else as I start to you know, turn off some layers. I actually kind of like this image. That's a pretty cool image. And uh, again, I could just work with this any any way I want. Let me just adjust these layer modes. Something like that. That looks good. Uh, but let's go beyond that because, again, I have this guy right here. And, uh, you know, I can, you know, use a layer mask. So if I just create a selection and hit this layer mask button, now that's the layer mask and this is non-destructive which means I can unlock that and kind of move him around I think most people know that but I want to go beyond that because I want to delete that layer mask and I actually want to bring him inside of this square so or this triangle here's again a pro tip holding down the command key I can click oh thank you it actually found it so it actually toggles on the automatically select tool so again I might try to move this white uh, triangle and oh, I have the wrong layer selected, right? So that happens. Just hold down the command key and that will select the one that you're trying to move. You can sort of move that into place, kind of something like that. Again, just working on a cool de design in general. Okay, so 
here's my shape. Here's my hipster bike guy. I want him to be masked out by the layer below it. I can just hold down the option key, make that a clipping mask, done and done. I can put him right there. Again, this is all about working non-destructively. I want to scale him down. Anytime you scale something, convert it to a smart object. Because chances are you might want to scale it back up. So if you convert it to a smart object, it retains all of those pixels. Okay, So that's what I do is convert it to a smart object, get it into place. If I decide I want to scale it up, those pixels are actually still there. Okay, But there's our cool guy. We'll place him right there. Uh, background's looking pretty good. What else do we have? I have some other layers. I could do the same thing for her as well. I'm just going to convert this to a smart object and place her in here. Okay, so this is just the quickest way to mask. Now we can have those two hipsters side by side, if you will. And uh, I think they're dating. But nonetheless, let's move on because, you know, as I'm working on this layout, and I still like that other background. This is a cool one. Let's get this one here. It has a lot of color to it. Um, I still need to add him in. And this guy, Jesse Boykins, right? Here's our musician. And I just need to create a little call out. He kind of needs to be like right down here, okay? And uh, what I want to do for him is I actually need to cut him out. So I can use the different selection tools and then, you know, sort of use that as a layer mask, but I can go beyond that because again, I'm throwing you, showing you like pro tips. I can go into selections rather than select from color range or anything, select focus area. Since he's in the foreground, it selects him. Looks good. I can always sort of remove that area. Let's do that again. And you know, in general, this looks pretty good. I only made one click right there. But let's go beyond that. Let's refine that edge because I want to refine his hair right up here, which means just determine the background and separate the background from his hair. And again, this would be almost impossible to do otherwise. Clicking OK. It makes a layer mask. That's my one without the smart radius. But you can see there he is. And there's my background still. So now I can do some fun things with this. You know, sort of bring this down. Forget what I said about not, uh, you know, making everything a smart object. Because, again, just for the sake of this example, I want him kind of busting out of that frame so I could still have that background in there. Let's just drop it in. Like that. And, again, you kind of get the idea. There's that background. He's kind of coming out of it. So anyways, that's the easy way to, uh, you know, make this design happen as I'm working on it. Again, all those other layers, these are just text layers. Everything looks good. Everything's non-destructive. Uh, let me go beyond this because as I'm working on this poster, again, this one's okay. Um, you know, once I have a poster done, like this one, this is kind of more the final one. I can have multiple versions. And rather than having multiple PSD files, what I can do is you can take, say for instance, all your layers and you can make an art board from this group or layers or whatever, okay? So make an art board from this group, bam! This is the new one, it's called City, whatever. We can change the name, let's call it uh, Sunshine, okay? I wanna make a new art board. I can just hold on the Command key Actually, I don't. I, I if I hold on the Option key and I click, it's going to duplicate it. Okay, or you could just click on it and it'll give you a new one. But now I have two of them, and let's not worry about that because that's another key I clicked. So now we have sunshine, and I can make this one like, you know, this is green. You know, you get the idea. I do that any way I want. Now I have two. On and on. Let's duplicate that again. Let's duplicate that one. And now we have many to choose from. Let's make that one space. Sure, that one. So now I have multiple posters all done with artboards, right? And I have the ability to use this artboard tool and drag out 
other artboards and pick maybe a different size. So even when you're doing any sort of, um, you know, sort of layout design for web, uh, what you might end up with is something like this, for instance, where you can have sort of multiple screens. So here they are all, it's like having, you know, in this case, six different PSDs within one PSD. And this works out great if you're doing any sort of uh, layout design for say apps or websites. So that's the short of it. Working non-destructively in Photoshop is probably one of the best things you can do. I didn't even get into the fact that you can start using um, adjustment layers as well, which was all part of uh, this initial design that I had right here. And adjustment layers allow you to add adjustments as I'm doing right now, right here, a gradient map for instance, without, uh, and it really affects the whole thing is what, it, what happens there. So you can start to sort of get different looks. So that's the idea, work non-destructively in Photoshop. Hopefully you learned some tips here and thanks so much for watching. Thank you.